Hello, everybody. Um, Andrea Majewski here with Dental Health Tutoring. So I just did kind of like a part one video. This is, I guess, part two of what to expect if you're taking the um, um, restorative hygiene program, okay? So depending on where you live, I did mention this before, you might not know what a restorative hygienist is. You might be going, what's that? Well, if you don't know, then you probably can't take the program. If it's not offered in your area, it might not be, but I'm talking specifically in Ontario where it is offered. So it does allow us to advance our skills to be able to place composites, amalgam, we can cement like crowns, bridges, we can take final impressions, but we can't prep the tooth or alter enamel in any way. So there's a lot that we can do, but there's also a lot that we can't do. So you have to know what that is. Um, I talk about that more in the course that I do offer. Um, it's not ready yet. Courses take time to make, but I kind of go through all of that with you. But in the video today, I want to talk to you guys about what to expect if you have signed up for the program and you're excited, you're looking forward to it, but what to kind of expect. Now, I can only speak to the program that I took. So there was an online component and there was a clinical portion too. Um, so the online was just a lot of theory. So you had to study so much and then you had to test after week one, of course, you have to pass to move on. If you didn't pass, too bad, so sad, see you later. They're very, very intense. And at the end, you did have to take a big final exam too. If you didn't pass that, then you could not move on to the clinical portion. So the clinical portion was exciting, but also intense too, because it did help me a lot, I think, because I was a dental assistant first. So I, I was used to seeing like composites, um, amalgams, like placing composites, placing amalgams. I kind of knew how the procedure and the different steps worked. Whereas if you aren't a dental assistant first, you kind of have to learn all of that. It's not hard to learn, but you are still kind of a step behind everybody else who might have been a dental assistant first. So it did really help me to be a dental assistant first. But if you're going into the program and you're not a dental assistant, don't bother going back to take the dental assisting course or something like that's not necessary but it will help you um, but I can also help you too because in the full course that I have I kind of teach you how to be that dental assistant so you know step by step what to expect for the procedures that you're able to do so I do make it a lot easier so I do talk about like composites amalgams crowns bridges so you go into your first day of school and you kind of have an idea not oh my goodness what does composite look like what's this capsule for oh that's composite you know and there's many different types too so I do talk about kind of the most common ones but in your restorative hygiene program for the clinical as I said it, 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 it was so exciting because even if you've worked with those materials before or not now you're the one doing everything you know you're the one doing everything it's not as easy as it looked and we literally learned as I said we had to place a certain amount of composites amalgams we had to cement crowns bridges we had to know how to um, insert like temporary uh, materials such as glass ionomer um, different types of uh, Fuji what else did we do I'm pretty sure we did work a little bit with ortho too but not too long on that one because they kind of expect your office to train you on that if that's something that you want to do I will think about that more because I do have to find my notes from school because I, I know that that would help so much. Um, and I do have those, but I think I put them somewhere to keep them safe, but of course I can't find them. So just think about, again, if you were an assistant before, this will be easier for you to kind of picture. But the dentist does all of the prep work. So they do the needle, they prep the tooth with the high speed, and then it's all on you. Meaning if you have an MODBL, you need to place that Toffelmeyer. You need to know, well, w which system am I going to use? Because now there's many different types. When I was a dental assistant, the Toffelmeyer and the band and, and the wedges was pretty much all that was out there. But now they have like Toffelmeyers, they have different types and materials of everything. So I kind of teach you guys the most common steps on that too. They do teach you how to place um, the rubber dam. They, of course, you know, teach you how to 
maneuver a Toffel Meyer, and they give you a couple different systems uh, to use too. So when you start working in an office, you will know hopefully how to do the ones that they have. And if you like a system better, then hopefully you can order that. Um, because like talking about um, Toffel Meyers and the bands and the wedges, you know, you need to do everything to get that contact, meaning, when you're doing a filling that's in between the teeth, if you don't do it properly, when you go to use the floss, it just goes up and down. But you need that contact because if it goes up and down where there's a space in between the teeth, food will get caught. That's not ideal. That's a bad work. Like that's a bad uh, job, I guess. You did not do a good job. If the dentist comes in and sees that, they will not be happy and they have to prep out that hard work that you did, even though it's not good, but I'm sure you did work hard. They will have to prep that out again and then do it again because you always have to get that compass or um, that contact. And that's the hardest thing. But I do talk about that more in the course too. Um, little tips that I had learned to get that contact. It didn't help me right away. You know, I was that student where things always took me longer. Everybody else did a perfect job. I was like, yeah, no, I need to do this again because there's a big space there. Oh, okay. Well, let's see what you did wrong. You know, so it took me a long time, but now I don't miss a contact. Knock on wood. Okay. And that's hard to do. Even for a dentist, it's not easy to get that contact where your teeth are nice and close together. If it's like this, or I should say like this, that is way too open, right? It has to be close because you don't want the food to get caught, but it can't be too tight where you're not able to get anything through. So it's kind of a fine line, but that's probably the hardest thing that you guys will learn. Um, you learn on obviously like teeth first, um, I'm trying to think at least a couple of weeks, but that's it. Like it doesn't take long. And then you have to work on real people. You obviously can't work on your student partners because there's nothing to prep there, right? So you have to work on real live patients pretty much right away. And it's very nerve wracking because you're like, I can't believe I'm doing this, but you just have to do it. You have to go for it. And there you go, because they're obviously paying a lot less to have you do it than if they go to the dentist. So just kind of things to expect. Um, I remember like we had clinic like four days a week and maybe class one day a week, but I can't remember. Different weeks were probably different too, but you do learn so much. Like you might be thinking you'll learn how to do amalgams one day and then composites the next day, or you take two days to learn amalgams. No, you will learn composites in the morning. You will have to practice them in the afternoon and then you're pretty much tested the next day. So you have to catch on fast. If you don't, ask questions and then hopefully you have a teacher to help you. So I can help you guys with that too, because that was the hardest part for me where things did always take me longer. I would be watching um, YouTube, like different like tutorials, but that didn't seem to help me because I would kind of learn their bad habits. I would try to apply them, but I still wouldn't do a good job. So just, just kind of things to expect. You will learn so much but it's so exciting to be able to work on real people. It's nerve wracking and exciting. So thank you guys for listening. Um, I'll probably upload another video shortly about sort of what to expect, but if you guys have questions, let me know because I need to know kind of what you guys are thinking. Um, cause this isn't something that I talk about often because not a lot of countries offer it, but now that I've started my own practice, um, I started my own um, dental hygiene mobile practice last year, and I'm kind of explaining to people what I'm doing. And a lot of um, comments are, I didn't know you could place composites. We're not allowed to do that here. Like, what kind of a hygienist are you? You know, so I'm just kind of opening it up to things you can do because not a lot of people know or think, oh, is she doing something she's not supposed to be doing? Because she just said that she places composites. We're not, what? You're not a dentist. What's going on? So it kind of helps to explain things a little bit more. But do not hesitate. If you have questions, let me know. I am so happy to help. And I'll see you in the next one.